Hello everybody and welcome to the Moon Sliver. I am of course Roxas Guy and uh, this is a game by David Szymanski. Click the title to begin. The Moon Sliver is intended to be completed in a single sitting and there is no save system. It is suggested you set aside an hour to complete it. I mean, an hour is a long time, so I'm gonna try and beat it in less than 30 minutes. No, I'm kidding. It will probably take me an hour, so it might I might split it up into two episodes, but if I get caught in the moment, then it's gonna be one long, homogenous episode of what I on can only assume to be psychological horror, because this game reminded me a lot of um, Finger Bones. I played it real early and when I first started you doing YouTube videos and everything so I'll leave a link down in the description for my video of that so you guys can go check that out it's pretty cool it really is it really fucks with your mind but I'm actually hoping this one does the same so let's just go ahead and find out shall we WASD W wads to move Space to jump, right mouse button, toggle flashlight on and off, left mouse button, interact and examine, and escape to toggle the menu. So, bam. Oh. Oh. This is very reminiscent of... Ah. Uh, finger bones. I actually think, I really think that the same guy made it. I'm not entirely sure, though. Oh, Wow. Yesterday, four people lived on this island. Now, only one remains. Oh, this is kind of cool. Can't run, but this is this is really well made. Uh, apparently, I can't go in there. Ooh. Am I getting electroshock therapy right now? Apparently. Alright. So, can I, like, go swimming? No? Oh, come on. What's the point of being on an island if you can't swim every once in a while? Am I right? They reached the ruins and strolled leisurely through them toward the shoreline. Issa could remember when the old buildings still stood here, filled with families. Oh, so this actually used to be... I'm sorry, he said, and he cried because he often cried during these talks. For what, she said. For a lot of things. These conversations were not new. Long ago, Issa had learned to love Abel despite, and for, his despondency. She hugged him as the wind tossed her long gray hair around. So there's a uh, pretty deep story here. Oh, okay, so as I go forward... Wait, wait, what? Uh, okay, I already read that one. Can I go in here? Okay, there we go. Issa kept a smile on her face, although she did not feel like smiling. Another, f a new flashlight? Oh, she sat down beside the flashlight. What about Ellie? Has Ellie mentioned anything to you? She said. She didn't take it either, he said. Nor did I, and nor, the and nor did Abel she said and yet it's gone okay so what is Daniel you're the last one I gave the key to said Isa Daniel stared at the mysterious control panels he didn't meet her eyes he never met anyone's eyes I didn't take it he said why would I take it I'm the one that told you it was missing okay The rusted junk cast shadow on the opposite wall. How do you know Abel didn't take it, he said. Because I trust him, she said. 
He's a dismal man, but he would never hurt any of us. Do you, do you trust Ellie? Daniel didn't answer immediately. I trust all of you, he said, because that's how we have to live. Okay, so apparently the dry pile smelled faintly sour. Alrighty then. So, there's a lot going on here, and it doesn't necessarily give me a, like, clear objective. I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie. She keeps the chapel locked, and she's the only one with a key, said Ellie, leaning on the barrels and folding her arms. So you're saying she took it, he said? My problem is that she's a liar, said Ellie angrily, fiddling with the knobs on the machine as- Oh, shit. Really? Oh, don't. Aww. Oh, it's one of those where I have to manage my flashlight. Okay. Uh, and that I have to keep explaining this to you over and over again. You don't know her like I know her. Exactly. You're not an, import, an impartial judge, he said. Okay, so it looks like my flashlight is failing me. Can I... Okay, those... Those will help, uh... Ooh... Knife. Okay. What's your problem with Isa? Daniel said, putting his book down. He was annoyed at being interrupted here. Alright, I think anybody would. Okay, so I have to keep a cautious eye on the uh, extent I use my flashlight to. Alright, so, ooh, what's this? The mysterious liquid had drained from the tank and into the water long ago. Oh, I can jump. Cool. I didn't even notice that. And there are trees. What stories will these trees tell us? These skeletons were all that remained. This place was a forest once. Issa could remember the glorious living trees. Barely. A damp tangle of trees and foliage, free to run wild and unkept. Unkempt. Can I, I don't, can't walk up the mountain, apparently. I'm not Spider Man. Can I go in here? Come back when night falls. Yeah? I. I really don't want to the night was wild and cold the monstrous tracks leading from the hatch were brand new but the wind quick quickly erased them monstrous monstrous tracks what what's going on okay I feel like I missed life he said Felt like it whizzed right by while I wasn't looking, and I'm watching it disappear into the horizon, stuck in this prison. Oh, come on, she said. Look out at the water. Isn't it beautiful? It's lonely, he said. Lonely and infinite. Okay, I've already read that one. They reached the ruins and strolled leisurely through them toward the shoreline. Issa could remember when the old building still stood there, filled with families. Okay, so I already looked there. That's where I came from. And this is the mysterious hatch. Where the apparent... Yes, monster came from. Alright, so I have to go this way. And apparently find a church. Oh, there's quite a few over here, actually. Are those submarines? Huh. Alright. What's in here? Oh. Is this a house? Oh, wait a minute. I remember when the moon still shined. 
when each night was bathed in warm silver, and the shadows were mysterious and friendly, and the island was a place of joy. That was many years ago. Since it disappeared, this place has become cold and stark, plagued by an inexplicable sense of loss and despondency. Daniel and Ellie are young. They do not feel it, but they don't they don't remember what the world used to be like, but Abel and I do, and we are both filled with a longing for intangible joys that can no longer be provided, for friends that don't exist, for feelings that cannot be re reasonably felt. When I was younger, I smiled because it f because I felt like uh, because I felt like smiling. Now that smile is a disguise. She took the knife from the shelf. The blade was dull and rusty, but it was still pointed. She was not smiling. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay. That's a book. What? Ooh. Ooh, I found a key. Ooh. Oh, okay, that's with that. Alright. Uh. Wait a minute. Key? Can I, can I not use the key here? Okay, apparently I can't use the key there. Um. Okay, I read that. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's go into building number two. And I thought there was like someone walking there for a second. Yeah, this seems normal ish. I've been thinking about life, said Abel, sitting down, and death, and uncertainty. Okay. Daniel stared at the pile of wood. He hadn't burned the wood for months. Let's talk about Ellie instead. Abel was silent for a moment. What about Ellie? He said. Daniel didn't need to answer. Abel swallowed. Alright. Let's talk about Ellie. So apparently, Ellie did something. Or is going to do something. Abel often visited Daniel. He loved to talk, and Daniel loved to listen. Issa and I were out for a walk, said Abel, as he entered. I thought I'd stop by before you got caught up in a book. Daniel put his book down. Hello, he said, his expression confused Abel. So, was it like an expression of, hello, I'm going to murder you, or hello, let's do the hanky-panky? Because, I mean, that expression would confuse the hell out of me as well. What were you and Abel doing at his house yesterday while I was climbing the mountain? He answered, casually flipping through the book on her table. It was covered in dust. Alright. You know, talking about them bitches. Ellie was laying on the bed. Daniel came in. She scowled at him suspiciously and beautifully. What were you and Issa doing at the old power building? What were you talking about? Psh! Who said we were talking? Yeah, yeah. So, that fire looks new. Are we 100% sure we're, like, alone? Oh. Is this like some religious mumbo jumbo? They could make more candles. They couldn't make more wood. So Abel burned candles. Okay, what did they burn candles out of? There is an evil man on this island, and I know him well. We played together as youths. We have cried together. We have eaten together. We have loved the same woman, betrayed the same woman. He is my constant companion and my worst enemy. He puppets my arms, legs, and mouth to his own selfish ends, and secretly hurts everyone I love as I watch, helpless, with their unsh unshed, unfelt blood on my hands. He gifts my flesh with indescribable pleasures, and blights my soul with unutterable despair. His name is Sin, and we are irrevocably bound together. Surely, there exists no hell worse than this. Okay, so apparently, 
he's the evil man. Abel read to escape. Daniel read to feed his lofty, strange thoughts. Issa read to pass the time. But Ellie? As far as Abel knew, she hadn't opened a book in years. What did she do all day? He didn't know. Sometimes he worried about her. He worried about all of them. They were as melancholy. Were they as melancholy as he was? Ah, oh, I can't open these boxes. The only thing that I could say about this game is I kind of wish they would do one uh, uh, text line at a time. Oh, is it just me or is it getting a lot darker? I think I'm going to go in, enter the, uh, this place now. Can I do that? Come back when night falls. Um, kind of looks like night's already here. Maybe I have to progress the story a little bit more. Let's go up here. I think I saw, like, a, uh, power thing. Somebody playing music? I don't need it yet. But I will here in a bit. Okay, so there's another hatch. The door had rusted shut. It, w it would never open. Okay. Alright, so what about this? Oh, there was that one last door. The second... Daniel sat with Ellie under the tree, his arm around her. Do you remember when we used to climb that tower over there? He said. I wonder how long before this whole island is underwater. Oh. So is the island slowly sinking? Just try not to miss any key details. Oh, wow. So there were more houses, but they got swept into sea by apparently the rising tide, I would assume. Alright, so here's where I came from. So wait a minute, yesterday four people lived on this island? What happened to the other? Three. Hmm. Okay. So there's the ominous feeling to this. Daniel was still thinking about his talk with Abel the day before as absent minded as he absent mindedly picked up the book. Something caught his eye, or rather, the lack of something. You mean the lack of words on the page? Alright. This... This is nice. It's an altar. Somebody probably did a religious sacrifice to some... thing. The word of Hector won. The moon sliver was written by the pure spring rain upon pages of dried leaves and found by noble Hector. The moon spoke to Hector. Really? The moon spoke to Hector. Alright. Saying, take this, the moon sliver, and make, it, make for it a place in the chapel of infinite light, for it is a holy document. Man cannot read it, but its every letter is known to the demons of the night, and greatly feared. Know that it will protect you, even should my light cease to bathe the night in holy silver. Give it a place of honor, and treat it as a prized possession, for it is your greatest weapon against evil. And so Hector took the moon sliver, 
and placed it in the chapel of infinite light upon a silver pedestal uh, and the night was warm with light and the day was bright with warmth okay so there's a lot of psychobabble about religion uh, that's the word of Hector four is there three and a two or a two and a three Okay, I where's where's two? Cause I don't want to go out of context here. He stared at the empty dais for some time, struggling to compare, comprehend this simple, shocking fact. Had he had someone moved it? Issa, perhaps? She was the only one with a key to the chapel of the infinite light. But Ellie or Abel could have borrowed it from her, as he had done, or taken it. Regardless. He had to tell the others. Okay, so somebody, some bad somebody, took something. Come on, there has to be... Okay, there's two. The woodland teeth, the monster of the forest, was more tenacious than the other demons. It hated the people of Hector and desired to take the island away from them and it lurked in dark corners and unseen passageways, scheming horrific schemes. It came to pass that Ursula had ta was taken, stalked by the woodland teeth in the dark undergrowth, underground, attacked, and dragged down to hell. Then the moon came to Hector in a dream and said, Hector, the time has come, your greatest enemy has arrived. You would all do well to tremble for his power is great and his depravity is unspeakable. Go, take the moon sliver from its pedestal and do battle. And so Hector went to the chapel of infinite light and retrieved the moon sliver and went into the tunnels. All right, so then, okay. The most, most of the text is illegible. Ah, oh, God damn it. Uh, Hector descended darkness, terrible whispering, infinite and deep, did not know how long he wandered, promises of brutal torture and mutilation waiting, begone teeth of the forest, spoke the holy incantations written upon, returned to the surface. Okay, so Hector made it. The moon sliver was gone. Okay, so this is the church. That's one, this is four. Again, the moon came to Hector in a dream. The woodland teeth has vanquished, it said. Your people are safe for now, but it still waits, lurking in the depths. It fears the moon sliver, and it will not dare appear again while the holy document remains in your possession. But know this, should the moon sliver ever be destroyed, even my divine light will not be able to save you from the wrath of the woodland teeth and the darkness of hell. Keep it safe, keep it ready, and may you live in prosperity on this island that I have given to you. Let your prosperity be a sign that the words I speak are true. Okay, so I can only assume that some douchebag... Oh. Oh, Jesus. It's dark now. Okay, so, thank you. So now I, uh, I feel that I must be wary of the woodland teeth now. Because, you know, it's dark, no light to protect me, or anything like that. So I need to go over there. Though I'm not 100% sure. Wait. Come back when night falls. This is night. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Don't tell me I have to go down in there. Okay, good. So. What am I supposed to do now? Do I have to go back inside one of these places?
Okay, I've read that one. Don't know if I'm supposed to do anything with those. So, the last place I was in was the church. So, there's got to be something there that I, that I must have missed. But, I mean, this is as night as you're going to get. Although there... There was another place I needed to go. Moon Sliver was gone. Yes, it is. Was I supposed to read another document or... Okay. He noticed that the Moon Sliver was gone. Let me go recharge my battery again. Yep, there we go. Uh, I can probably get away with turning it on periodically. So, no exact threat has been uh, noticed yet. So it's night. Come back when night falls. It's fucking night. What the hell? Actually, is that a place I have to go? No. It shouldn't be. Unless I can go around a little bit. Nope. Alright. So, what about that? Alright guys, I'll skip to when I make a little bit of progress. Strange acidic smell emanated from the pipe. Okay. Like, that helps me. There's gotta be something that I'm missing. Actually, those two boxes. I could open them. Ah. Alright, let's check back here. Daniel was a quiet man. He spent his life lost in the books of old or lost in his own thoughts. He wondered why he wondered where the barrels had come from and who had put them there. Issa was the oldest and if not the wisest, certainly the most learned. She remembered when Josiah still lived. She would sit on this crate and listen to his stories those memories, like so many others, were bittersweet. Uh, Ellie was a sullen and beautiful girl, the youngest of them all, with a mind unfit for lofty thoughts. She had once come in here to see if there were any old firewood. Otherwise, she stayed in her cluttered house where it was warm and familiar. Okay, so those are wrenches. Can't pick those up. Abel loved Issa, and he loved Daniel and Ellie, but when his mind wasn't turned toward their well-being, it was filled with thoughts of bleak hopelessness. Sometimes he would rifle through the barrel. The promise of undiscovered trinkets raised his spirits, if only temporary. Alright, so I really need to recharge my uh, flashlight here. Which, come to think of it, by that one power station where the music was, I wonder if there's still music. I 
No, no more music. So what was that? What exactly was that music coming from? Was it coming from here? It's rusted shut, won't ever open again, okay. Let me check these again. There's gotta be something. Uh, okay. Is there a key anywhere? Can't crouch to look underneath things. Um. Okay, nothing over there. Oh, nothing over here. All right, let's look at this place. Oh, there's a key. He watched Ellie put her clothes back on, his eyes unfocused, not really seeing her. She didn't say anything. Her lips were pursed in that eternal, ignorant scowl. He got up from the bed and opened his box. He used to believe that one day he could plant the last few seeds and they wouldn't be able to grow food again. But now, he knew that the ground was poison. Issa had given the seeds to him for safekeeping. Issa loved him. Issa trusted him. His eyes filled with tears, but he didn't let Ellie see. I'm supposed to meet Issa for a walk, he said. She didn't answer. She just left. So... Abel loved Issa, or at least I'm thinking that's Abel. Abel loved Issa, but Abel was a cheating bastard. Alright, so is there a key next to this box or behind this box? No, and the same key won't do. Okay, read that. Oh. Oh, okay. Issa didn't know what the object was, but she remembered her father tinking, tinkering with it in his workshop when she was a girl. The workshop at the adjoining home were now far underwater. She was not a young woman, but even now, seeing it brought her comfort. Abel came in. How do I get into storage? He asked. She shut and locked the box. I've told you before, she said. I forgot. He said, I don't go there often. Press the first three until they click. Leave the fourth alone. Okay. So I have to push the first three and leave the fourth alone. I have absolutely no idea what that means, but let's go find out. I'm pretty sure I know where I have to go. Yeah, the more I think about it, I'm just going to make this one long episode. So, hopefully it's not too terribly long. Okay. Uh, I need a power outlet. Thank you. Okay, so one, two, three. Leave the fourth alone. Okay, so that didn't do anything. So, maybe... Uh, let's go in this one. Apparently it's not this one either. Just a quick jolt. Flashlight. See, why can I pick up that flashlight and have like two flashlights? That would be... That would be helpful like nothing else right now. Because if I go down there and next thing you know... There's no flashlight charger thing. Can I go in here? Come back when night falls. It's already night and I have no idea where to go now. Ugh. Alright, I'll be back, guys.
push the first three until click. Something has to click. Okay, so they're all clicking. Unless I have to look at it this way. Push first three until they click. They're all clicking though. Alright, walk away. Okay, so maybe that did something? Actually, I wonder if now I can get into that other hatch. Hmm. Ah, uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh. Ah, shit. I could have picked a worse time. Is there. Oh, uh, I need a. I need a plug. There we go. Okay. So, I'm here. I don't. I, I, I really don't want to go down. I really don't. I'm fearing for my life right now. Okay. This is nice. This is just like... Ellie was uneasy. The darkness had never felt this menacing before. It seemed alive. Watchful. Well... Shit. Am I going to get my giblets eaten? I don't want my giblets eaten. I'm too young to get my giblets eaten, okay? And I can't run, so that's very... Not good. Okay, so there's nothing here. No real threat has been presented. A family of rats lived amid the crates of dried food. They were perhaps the last animals left alive. By what? The, um... The tree... thing? Okay. This music's not really doing it for me right now. That, I came from that way, so let's go. Ellie? Daniel's voice echoed around the tunnels. Silence. She couldn't explain the feeling. It was as though something was lurking around every corner, staying out of sight, staying ahead of her. Oh, please don't let me die. I'm really going to hate it when my flashlight starts to flicker. Daniel ha heard soft scratching footsteps behind him. He turned and shined his flashlight around the tunnel. Nothing. 
Oh, this is fantastic. Here's a plug thingy. There we go. Let's just shock ourselves a little bit. Alright, so apparently there's nothing here. Can't read anything. Um, dead end. So I guess we go this way. There's a random table. Multiple random tables and tipped over chairs. She never felt like this before. She knew these tunnels well. She had been down here hundreds of times, yet she was lost. Lost, confused, and afraid. Alright, that's wonderful. So, did Ellie go cuckoo psycho and end up killing everybody? Because that's about the kind of vibe I'm getting right now. There is never a beast of sorts. It was just Ellie killing them all off one by one. Oh, let me... Okay. Gotta get juiced. He called again. Ellie? Still no answer. But he heard the footsteps again. Oh, that's wonderful. Let's, let's not hear footsteps, okay? That would be a good thing not to hear. Oh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. He didn't even have time to cry out as the shadow silhouette in his flashlight beamed, lunging toward him. Okay, please don't lunge out towards me. I, I really don't feel like having another heart attack. Not a real heart attack, don't worry guys. Just, you know, one of those fear-induced panic attacks that just rack your body with fear that it feels like you're having a heart attack. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad right now. It's scary. It's pretty creepy, actually. But not, not like jump scare scary. It's psychological. And I absolutely love these kind of games because it just fucks with your mind and you're just like on this permanent mode of paranoia that just ends up fucking with your mind. Oh, you motherfucker. No. She felt its breath before she felt its claws and then she was gone. Oh, I heard that shit. Don't you fucking dick with me. Uh-uh. I'm not putting up with that shit. I am perfectly fine with there being no real threat. I am perfectly fine with not dying. So, why don't you just go fuck yourself? That's what I have to say about that. Okay, I think I'm going the right way. What I have to do... Okay, yep, I'm going the right way. What I have to do is go back to where I first was and then go the other direction. And get the fuck away from whatever was there. Because I'm not... I'm not dealing with that. Okay. So... That is where I came in. Oh, there's another puzzle. The code was long forgotten. Nobody had been below in many years. Oh. Oh, what the fuck? I just tried a random fucking code. They had to know the truth, and Hector would not tell it. So down here, where nobody would find him, he wrote on scraps of paper, 
Maybe someday someone would discover them. Why do I hear something? Oh, that's creepy. What is down here? What do I need to see? What scraps of fucking paper? Alright, so... Oh, shit. There goes my flashlight. And there's no plug for me. So it looks like somebody burned everything down here. Can I go back up? Really? Come on. Okay. I actually really need to find a, uh... A plug. Actually, I believe I've been everywhere, so now... I should be able to go into that other place, right? Or at least I should. Oh yeah, it's fucking dark out here. Holy shit, and it's loud. There we go, okay. Issa couldn't remember the last time she had been under the mountain. There was no reason to come here, but she had looked everywhere else. She clutched the old knife in her right hand. Yesterday, the, sil the moon sliver went missing. Today, Ellie, Daniel, and Abel are all nowhere to be found. She knew the word of Hector by heart. The sinister implications were not lost to her. So, am I Issa? I have a feeling I might be Issa. Ellie, she called. Daniel? Abel? Abel heard, heard her and answered, I'm here. There was something strange about his voice. Something Issa didn't like. What are you doing here? I am reading of pages past, he said. Do you know where Ellie and Daniel are? She said. I do not, he said. They are missing, she said. They're missing, and the moon sliver is missing. Do you understand me? Do you understand what this implies? I do, he said. Night will fall in a few hours, and we need to stick together. We can sleep in the same house, mine or yours, and we'll keep the fire burning. I'll keep the door locked, and we will pray, Abel. We will pray to the unseen moon for mercy and protection. Are you happy here, Issa? We can't stay in the dark. It thrives in the dark. Oh, is Daniel it? Are you happy? Oh, fuck me. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Please, Abel. There were tears in his eyes, and he struggled to control his voice. Issa, I know you. I know every inch of you, and I know every corner of your mind. You aren't happy. None of us are happy. Issa didn't respond. I'm staying here. The, teas were f the tears were flowing freely now. I would like it if you stayed with me, Issa. Please stay with me. It will find you, Abel. I let it out, Issa. I destroyed the moon sliver. Why? Issa was shocked and silent. I burned it yesterday after I talked with Daniel. Her eyes were filling with betray her eyes were filling with betrayed, angry tears. What? Abel? No. Why? Do you want to be dragged to hell? Do you want us to be dragged there with you? We're already in hell. This island, this horrible, barren, lonely island, this place of sin, this is hell. I saw the blasphemous scraps of papers Jeremiah found. Those many years ago, I read them before they were destroyed. Perhaps I was the only one who did, and I did not believe them, but I had lived life since then, and I have not seen the truth of their words. Issa could not respond as tears streamed down her face. She just kept walking toward the sound of his voice, the knife clutched in her hand. She could see him ahead, her flashlight beam cutting through the sickly fog. He was sitting in a chair, a book on his lap, 
As she approached, she could see that he was crying too. I don't have a flashlight. It would be nice to have a flashlight. Please, trust me. Please. I believe the words of Hector, she said again, and she put the knife to her chest, point first. Oh, why are you doing this? No, no, Issa, please don't. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. I love you, she spat tearfully. I love you so much. She closed her eyes she closed her eyes and pushed. She remembered where the heart was located from one of her father's old books. Abel was too slow to catch her falling body. He he knelt beside her and sobbed for some time. He was not a strange young man anymore, but Issa's body was light. He would take he would take her out to the water. She had always loved the water, but then what? Read? Read until it found him? No, he didn't feel like reading anymore. He was ready to be rid of this entire cursed island, books and all. Hello, I see you down there. Can I turn on my flashlight? He would simply wander aimlessly and freely to take in one last look at the island and feel the wind blowing the memories away. So, I'm not Issa, I'm Daniel. And then... When night fell, he would return and wait. Okay, hi. It's not over? Morning dawned on the empty island, cold and bright and windy. The Moon Sliver Created by David Szymanski Okay, so this game... This game, I really enjoyed it. Like... It was all there. The uh, immersion. The way that the uh, camera started flickering in and out, the music was pretty, it added to the immersion. That and the, uh, the story was actually really good. It didn't make any sense at first, but then once everything started coming together, it made a lot of sense. So is this it? Is, it? is there nothing else? Dedicated to Rachel Szymanski. Okay, am I going backwards? Yeah, I think I am. Is there anything else after the end? No? Okay, so yeah, this game was really reminiscent of Finger Bones. Like, I got a lot of the same immersion effects from that game. Uh, the same style was about the same, the style of the game was about the same, so I'm pretty sure it was the same person who made uh, Finger Bones. But don't quote me on that, because I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't really checked or did much research before I played this game just so I could be like oh okay I don't know much about this game let's just jump in and have some fun so hopefully you guys enjoyed this is probably going to be about an hour episode maybe 40 minutes once I edit out a few things but um yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed I'm hoping that there will be a lot more games like this in the future um, if you guys have any recommendations whatsoever like psychological horrors um even jump scare horrors i mean the jump scare horrors don't really scare me as much as the psychological horrors but feel free to comment down below any recommendations you guys have i'll definitely check them out but uh yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys in the next episode later guys